Hey folks, David Stewart here. Hope you guys are having a good day. Let's talk a little bit about uh, high trust and low trust society and sales. Now, before I talk about sales, you can join my Patreon. You will get free copies of my books, a new one rotating every single month, and you'll get access to an exclusive Discord, one of many possible features that you could get through, through my uh through my Patreon, and don't forget to subscribe to my non-talky music channel, which I'll have linked uh, down below. Salesman, my mom, you've heard the expression like, could sell an icebox to an Eskimo. My mom's the Eskimo. Like my mom is very susceptible to salespeople, and I've noticed that lots of other elderly people, people that are baby boomers or older, uh, tend to be more susceptible to salespeople than younger people. Younger people tend to be very put off when somebody um, tries to sell them something. Uh, they're aware of salesman tactics, and they usually view them as very sleazy and uh, off-putting. And one of the reasons that I think we have this reaction is just because our society has gone from a, a relatively high trust society to a low trust society. And what does that mean? Well, you know, my mom, if she meets a new person, then it's somebody she hasn't met that is a potential friend or is probably a neighbor. She grew up in a relatively small city in Texas where most people knew each other. And so if you were buying something from a salesman, you were uh, going to be buying something from somebody that was part of your community, somebody who lived down the street from you. Uh, you were helping them out. They might help you out with different things. They might buy something from you or just they're part of the community and therefore you value them. So there's a social relationship that mitigates some of the negativity that we view from salespeople trying to like get one over on people and uh, you know try to get away with something with people's money and leave them with a bad product because if you if your neighbor were to sell you a bad product that could affect all of his social relationships. You know somebody's not going to help him out. He's going to be shunned from society. People uh, he, he might have the pastor at the local church talking to you about your sham products, right? So when there's community, there's a strong social mitigation of uh, things like fraud or just uh, selling bad products. As society has gotten bigger and we've urbanized and we've become a lower trust society, people have wised up to the fact that salespeople are you're never going to see that person again. That person's not part of the community. It's not a person that is uh, a neighbor that you haven't met yet. Um, this is a person who's trying to get your money and disappear. If it, even if it's someone at a used car lot, right? Uh, you know, the used car salesman is is sort of this uh, arch typical character that you see in fiction. And it's based on this real life experience of you're going to buy a used car. All sales are final. They're trying to sell you a lemon. They're not going to be honest with what they're selling you because you're never going to see that person again. So when you're never going to see a person again, their incentive to be honest is very low. Now, this is not a new thing, but it's something that used to be pretty exclusively urban and now I think is affecting lots of different elements of society. In my Substack article, I linked a scene from Seinfeld, a classic um, a scene from Seinfeld in the 1990s where Jerry is going to buy a new car and he's really excited to buy this car because uh, the guy he's buying it from, David Putty, is the boyfriend of his friend Elaine. So he's going to get a deal. So essentially we have a social connection. He's excited because there's a social connection with the salesman that's going to prevent him from getting screwed. That's going to make sure that he is getting an honest price for his product and not being overcharged. Well, what happens is, of course, while the sale is going on, they break up. You know, David and Elaine break up. And so now he's getting all these other charges. Oh, yeah, you want the undercoating. You want the clear coat. You want the floor mats. You want this. You want that. Uh, finder's fee. Finder's fee? It was on the lot. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> it's like... All this kind of stuff. And anybody who's experienced trying to buy a car and having a bunch of surprise charges appear at the end of the bill uh, can attest to this. This is something that, how do they get away with it? They get away with it kind of knowing that 
Uh, they're not going to see that person again. And if they do see that person again, they're holding all the cards, right? Uh, if that person doesn't shop at that uh, particular dealership again, it's no big deal. People aren't buying cars that often. So uh, maybe you'll still still see them again in eight or 10 years, or there's a million other people to sell a car to that's not that person. And it's more important that you make your, make your paycheck for that month, right? So the incentives are all misaligned when you don't have any sort of social consequence to what you're doing. Um, and this ties into, I, I read a book a while back called, um, it's not called The Art of the Sale. It's called, uh, what's it called? It's called How to Master the Art of Selling. Uh, it is by a guy named Tom Hopkins. He had like a little uh, TV special that you can actually watch here on YouTube that goes over a lot of the content. It's called How to Master Selling Anything, uh, something like that. So I read this book. It's considered, you know, a general good sales advice book. And it's just packed to the brim with sleazy sales tactics, the kind of things that if you are under 70, you're going to immediately get your skin crawling when somebody does something like this. You're really aware that they're trying to screw you and take your money and that they're being dishonest and that you are not going to trust that person. Um, the sleazy sales tactics weren't as sleazy 40 years ago because you had that those social factors mitigating it. Um, I'm not going to recommend or not recommend the book. You can watch the YouTube um, special from like 1980 and get a grasp of what uh, it's not a YouTube special, but it's on YouTube and it's a special like a TV special from 1980 and get a grasp of some of the things he's saying. Like you avoid mentioning the price until the very end. So you hook them into buying it and then you give them the price. That's to con them out of more of their money because if you give them the price up front, what are they going to do? They're going to immediately make a value assessment and think about their budget. Like I can't afford $800 right now. Whereas you get them at the end and then they're, they're more willing to spend $800 because you've pumped up the value. You've uh, convinced them so much that they need the product that they'll be willing to spend $800 on. And of course, their original assessment was probably correct that they don't need the object for $800. There's precious few things that we really need. And the point of selling is to try to convince someone that they need something that honestly they don't need. Now, if you're doing really honest sales work, it's actually connecting people with products that they're going to use and going to improve their lives. And Tom's very good about that. Um, but you're going to pick those out. If you've ever had people start to use that thing on you, you, you know, you have an experience like this person's trying to take me for a ride. I'm getting, I'm walking away from this. Like our immediate reaction to anybody trying to sell you something nowadays is like, get away from me, right? I don't want any person to sell me things. I would rather do my research online, come to my conclusion, and then find the appropriate price for the object. We want all the, all the information on the table before we make any decision nowadays. Whereas the salesman, there's always an asymmetrical relationship with salesman, particularly in the past, because he knows everything about the product where you don't know anything about it. So the things that he's choosing to reveal about the product really matter because uh, he's giving you the information that's going to try to convince you to buy the product and you're not sure what information he's holding back or misrepresenting. And if you don't have that social factor, making him be honest and tell you everything that you need to know, uh, there's a strong asymmetry with that kind of relationship. So it's called How to Master the Art of Selling. It's not a bad sales book, but um, it's outdated in the sense that I think modern young people just don't operate. Uh, they're not susceptible to sales tactics that way anymore because they don't trust the people that are selling them. Uh, that's really, I guess, the long and short of it. So uh, I'm curious what some of uh, y'all's feelings are about salesmen and salespeople. Do they revolt you? Do they turn you off? Are you okay with them? Are, do your, are your parents really susceptible to salespeople? Because I guess, I'm guessing the older generation is. And I wonder if my generation, when we get to be old, we'll be the people that like anytime somebody's trying to sell us something that we need, we're like shutting the door and be like, I don't need that. I'll I'll burn sticks in the forest before I buy your heater. You know, that's, <laughs> I have a feeling like we're going to be the worst penny pitchers of the lot once we get old. We're going to be very crotchety and uh, tight walleted, let's say. But anyway, I'm curious what other people have to, to say about that. Um, it's something that you notice 
in art going back like 100 years, like the sleazy salesman as a character archetype. It's not necessarily new, but what I think is new is the fact that we view all salespeople in this light because we don't know them anymore, right? We don't know anyone. So uh, anyway, leave me your thoughts and I'll see you all next time. Have a great, great day.